touched by the rays did not fail to rush to the spot in order to receive all kinds of food and drink. At the sight of this huge crowd, the Sresthin Bindu silently raised his eyes to the heavens and immediately there fell from the sky a rain of different foods of a hundred flavors and everybody received as much as they wished. If people did not collect it themselves, the servants gave it to them, dividing it up and distributing it. When all were satisfied, the rain stopped. Whether people had need of food and drink, bedding, clothing, etc. It was the same. Having thus satisfied the desires of beings, Bindu then preached the Dharma to them and led them to renounce the four foods. All were then established in the non-regressing Bhumi. By the power of their supernaldages, Bodhisattvas fulfill the wishes of beings. 2. Do the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas fulfill wishes without exception? Question. When the Buddha was present in the world, beings were still hungry and thirsty, the sky did not always pour down rain, and beings were distressed. If the Buddha himself could not fulfill the wishes of all beings, how then could the Bodhisattva fulfill them? Answer. The Bodhisattva abiding on the tenth Bhumi and in the concentration of the progress of the hero is in the Trizahasra Mahasahasra Lokadadu. And sometimes he manifests there the first production of the mind of Bodhi and practices the six perfections. Sometimes he manifests as non-regressing. Sometimes he manifests as being separated from Buddhahood by one single lifetime and, in the Tasita heaven, he preaches the Dharma to the Devas. Sometimes he comes down from the Tasita heaven and is born in the palace of King Suddhodana. Sometimes he leaves home and becomes Buddha. Sometimes he appears in the midst of the great assembly, turns the will of the Dharma and saves innumerable beings. Sometimes he manifests his entry into nirvana and seven precious stupas are erected for him so that beings can honor his relics everywhere in all the kingdoms. Sometimes finally his dharma becomes extinct. If the bodhisattva helps in those ways, what can be said about the Buddha? The body of the Buddha is of two kinds. 1. The true body. 2. The emanated body. In beings who see the true body of the Buddha, there is no wish that is not fulfilled. The true body of the Buddha fills space. His rays illumine the ten directions. The sounds of his sermons fill innumerable universes in the ten directions as numerous as the sands of the Ganges equally. All the members of the great assembly hear the Dharma simultaneously and he preaches the Dharma uninterruptedly. In the space of one moment, the listener obtains the understanding of what he has heard. When the Kalpa is finished and by virtue of actions collectively accomplished, the great rain comes down without interruption, it cannot be governed by the other three great elements. Only the winds that come from the ten directions at the end of the Kalpa and come up against one another can withstand this water. AP. In the same way, the Dharma preached by the Buddha of the true body or the body of the fundamental element cannot be accepted by the practitioners of the three vehicles with the exception of FTHE Bodhisattvas of the 10th Bhumi. Only the Bodhisattvas of the 10th Bhumi whose skillful means and power of knowledge are inconceivable can hear and accept this Dharma. Beings who see the Buddha of the body of the Dharma are liberated from the threefold poison, the afflictive emotions, the sufferings of cold and heat, and all of their wishes are fulfilled. If the Sintamani brings all that one desires, what can be said of the Buddha? The Sintamani satisfies all worldly wishes. The Buddha, on the other hand, satisfies all super-worldly wishes. Claiming that the Buddha does not fulfill the wishes of beings completely is a false statement. Moreover, the Buddha Sakyamuni who took birth in the palace of the king seemingly took on human qualities. He endured cold and heat, hunger and thirst, sleep. He underwent criticism, old age, sickness, death, etc. But in his mentality, wisdom, and divine qualities, he was no different from a fully and completely enlightened Buddha. Had he wished to fulfill the desires of beings, he would have fulfilled them all. Actually he did not fulfill them because already for numberless lifetimes he had satisfied the desires of beings in regard to garments and food, but without their escaping from suffering. Presently, 
he wanted only to bring them the unconditional and eternal bliss of nirvana. When one has compassion for one's relatives, one does not give them good food mixed with poison. Now worldly favors produce fetters and, furthermore, if they are untimely, they give rise to great suffering. This is why Sakyamuni does not consider them to be necessary. Finally, some say that Sakyamuni did indeed fulfill the wishes of beings but that the latter did not profit from them. Vimalakirdanirdasa. Thus it is said in the Piamo Loki King. The Buddha tapped the earth with his toe and at once his field was adorned with the seven jewels. And the Buddha said to Saraputra. My Buddha field is always like that, but because there are many bad people, it appears to be different from a Buddha field. Also when the Nagraja impartially makes it rain, the rain is water for humans, but for the Pritas, it is burning embers. Question. If the Bodhisattva fulfilled the wishes of all beings, since the latter are finite in number, nobody would suffer from thirst and cold any longer. Why? Because according to this hypothesis, all beings realized their wishes and all wanted to escape from suffering and find happiness. Answer. When the Sutra says. Fulfilling the wishes of all beings, the word all is taken in a broad sense and not in a narrow sense. It is like the stanza in Fakiu where it says. All fear death. There is no one who does not fear the suffering of being beaten. By being inspired by the leniency one feels for oneself. One avoids killing, one avoids inflicting a beating. Although this stanza claims that everybody fears the suffering of being beaten. The formless beings who have no body escape the suffering of the stick, the beings of the subtle form realm, while having a body, also escape the suffering of the stick. And among the beings of the desire realm, there also are some who do not undergo the suffering of the stick. Here, when the stanza says everybody, it means all those who are susceptible to being beaten and not really everybody. Thus, when the Bodhisattva fulfills the wishes of all beings, it means all beings capable of being satisfied. But the good intentions of the Bodhisattva are limitless and the fruits of retribution of merit that he has acquired are likewise limitless. Nevertheless, hindered by the sins they have committed during innumerable incalculable periods, beings are unable to receive the benefits of them. Story of Losakatajya Thus, a disciple of Saraputra, the monk Lopinchio observed discipline zealously. When he begged for alms, he was unable to get anything for six days. When the seventh day came, there was only a short time for him to live. A colleague begged for food and gave it to him but a bird carried it away. Then Saraputra said to Madhgalyayana, With your great magical power, watch over his food so that he can eat it. Then Madhgalyayana took some food and went to offer it to Losakatajya. But as soon as the latter tried to bring it to his mouth, it changed into mud. Saraputra in turn begged for food and presented it to him, but Losakatajya's mouth closed up by itself. Finally, the Buddha came with some food and offered it to him. By means of the Buddha's immense merit, Losakatajya was finally able to eat it. After having eaten, the monk developed joy and increased faith and veneration. The Buddha said to the bhikshu, all conditioned dharmas have suffering as their nature, and he preached the Four Noble Truths to him. At that very moment, the